Hey everyone and welcome to Drone News Now. Welcome to Drone U HQ. My name is Paul and as always, thank you. It's been a busy week. We've seen a lot of investments in American manufacturing, a lot of seed rounds of funding for new American or domestic drone companies, and so much more is going on. But moving into our first piece of news this week, it looks like drone shows are hitting a speed bump. As Sky Elements Drones is being sued by the mother of a seven-year-old child who was quote unquote, permanently injured from a drone show that went south or literally fell out of the sky. The mother is suing Sky Elements Drones and the city of Orlando and the drone manufacturer that Sky Elements Drones uses. Now this should actually be quite telling about the future of drone shows because the mother is arguing how could one person control 500 drones safely. It'll be really interesting to see what type of impact this has on drone shows or drone show uh, re regulations. We have so many DJI leaks, it's crazy. But what I'm excited about is the DJI Mini 5 Pro. Now many of you are excited about it as well. We should be expecting that drone September 16th or about 100 days before the DJI ban. Now I hope you won't be flying to Mexico to pick one up and we'll still be able to get them here in the States before the PERMA ban. That being said, what makes me so excited about this drone is it's almost like an Osmo Pocket 3 flying with wings. I mean a one inch sensor with an aperture down to 1.8, which makes it almost like the Phantom 4 Pro of the skies. Now I say that because the Phantom 4 Pro was a one inch sensor and it was great at video, it was great at photos, and it was also great at mapping. Who knows what this Mini 5 Pro will truly be capable of, but it's exciting nonetheless. Because if you think about it, this sub 250 gram drone will have a 51 minute flight time, but also have prop guards. This might make it the most valuable drone on the market for a mere $1,299 as leaked in a European drone store. So they're already getting them, we're getting ready for the launch. I think that this could actually be the last great launch of DJI drones prior to the ban. And I've already seen some leaked stuff on Discord channels from other influencers here in the United States and they're already filming their videos. We're really excited for that, but we're also really excited for DJI's other leak, the Osmo Pocket 4, which is showcasing two distinct cameras instead of one allowing for shooters to get more of a parallax look, a more zoom look. And if you're not familiar with that, here in the drone world, having these zoom cameras allows us to create more dynamic shots that draw the attention and engagement of the audience much more than just a nice big wide shot. Flying closer and flying lower has become easier, but has not replaced the skill of flying closer and lower. So make sure you check out that subject tracking class on our website if you have it. Skydio is also rumored to be launching two new drones in the middle of the month here at their Ascend conference in Santa Cruz, California. We're expecting to see a VTOL fixed wing drone, which would compete with people like Wingtra, who just astronomically increased their prices with the Ray, and also Quantum Systems, which has cut the price of Wingtra in half and offering an almost identical system to allow for long range BVLOS mapping and have all those photos geo-referenced so you're not laying GCPs all day long. We're super excited to see what Skydio has to come out and supposedly they're coming out with a confined space drone as well. Now, I wouldn't get your hopes up. I don't think that this is gonna be like an Avada 2 or an Avada, but more so like the Loki 2, the Lemur 2 from Brink. Um, those drones are more um, focused on law enforcement as a whole barricaded suspects, etc. It's going to be really interesting to see exactly what unfolds at the Ascend conference. Which brings us to our other piece of news. Um, Soten drone manufacturer, ACSL, has launched a new remote called the Taten, which is just one letter off of my call sign, Taken Flight, which is my last name. Anyway, I digress. This new remote should allow the drone to fly much further than before. And we have flown the Soten and we did not put out a review. I think this new remote for ACSL would have a very great impact on their Soten drone, which for those of you who don't know, would be the cheapest mapping drone with a global shutter in the domestic market. So it's not made in the United States, but it's a domestically approved drone. And having this new remote would significantly increase its capability as a whole. So very excited to try it out. 
Um, hopefully we'll be able to do that here soon. But also don't forget the BVLOS comment period. I keep coming back to the permitted operations really should be allowed in more densely populated areas because essentially the FAA is saying all these automated flights uh, are gonna have limited input and control from pilots. Well, doesn't that just mean that crashes are okay? This is something that we need to consider and if we're gonna help the mom and pop shops of the world and not cut out everyone else for the Walmarts of the world, then maybe we need to be thinking about increasing the population, population density um, limitations for permitted users. If you haven't checked out our video on part 108, I highly recommend watching our podcast on it. We really go into detail. Thank you again for joining me as always. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com where we can talk about it long form on our podcast and get all your questions answered. That way you can fly confidently. And if you are ready to rise above the rest and fly well above the competition, then you've got to learn from experienced pilots. The only place that you can do that right here at DroneU.